tonight, marijuana in Washington could be leading people in Idaho to break the law. And President Trump stopped short of declaring a national opioid emergency. And we give you all the news in sports. Morrow News 8 starts right now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Nick Bartlett. And I'm Austin Getz. Welcome to Murrow News 8. Marijuana seizures in Moscow, Idaho increased from two pounds in 2015 to roughly 41 pounds in 2016. Jesse Maywald looks into how Washington might be to blame. While anyone can purchase marijuana in Washington at the age of 21, marijuana is still illegal to possess in Idaho. I can tell you that as long as you have a valid ID, out of state or not, Washington allows you to come in and smoke their cannabis. MJ's Pot Shop accounted for roughly $31,000 in Washington State's excise tax for the month of September. Certainly you can see the difference in, in uh, the cannabis industry and how it's helped the um, taxes here in town. MJ's Pot Shop is the oldest dispensary in Pullman. We started out with, I think, two cases full of maybe 10 to 15 products. It was very limited as far as what growers were available. And here we are three years later, tons of shops open, ridiculous amount of growers and processors available. Washington historically competed with Idaho regarding various laws such as Washington's minimum wage. I think it is a draw because it's not legal in Idaho. So, um, you know, to me it's sort of a tit for tat. It's uh, you keep the restaurants and we'll keep the cannabis and you come over and buy it and spend your money over here. Cannabis legalization in Washington has created a downward trend of small personal use seizures among its residents. However, this isn't always the case with nearby cities and towns. Uh, marijuana that is professionally packaged for sale, obviously from a dispensary, is showing up more and more. Seizures in Idaho increased from 2 pounds in 2015 to roughly 41 pounds in 2016. Jesse Maywald, Murrow News 8. Alpha Kappa Lambda, or AKL, a Washington State University fraternity, was put on temporary suspension earlier this week. According to a press release by the WCU Interfraternity Council, AKL's national headquarters suspended the WCU chapter after a complaint was filed against them on October 18th. The WCU Interfraternity Council followed with their own suspension shortly after. During the temporary suspension, AKL's normal operations will be limited as the national headquarters and WCU will investigate the complaint. In addition to the AKL suspension, the WCU Interfraternity and Panhelletic Councils announced on Wednesday that non-Greek students and visitors will not be allowed to attend Greek social events until after Halloween. After Halloween, Customized wristbands were distributed to all Greek chapters and anyone without a wristband will not be allowed into any social events. The decision by the councils followed the suspension of all Greek social events that happened last fall. Although we're enjoying the sunshine now, it's already time to start preparing to drive in snowy and icy conditions. With the rain and wind picking up and leaves changing colors, that means one thing. Winter is coming, and when the snow and ice come to the Palouse, WSU Police Assistant Chief Steve Hansen finds that work picks up. There's a very steep learning curve the first couple days that it snows, especially the first one. Uh, I think last, it was last year we had 50 in mid 50s to 60 collisions in the first day, not just us, but throughout the city. Could even been more. A significant number of WCU students come from Western Washington and California, places where driving in snow and ice is a rarity and not part of everyday life. So when the snow does finally arrive, practice safe driving techniques. Students and faculty are sharing their frustrations after WCU announced it would be implementing major budget cuts to the performing arts. Many students attended a forum where they shared how the stage program has benefited their lives. Others were disappointed the students weren't part of the budget talks. Even with the setbacks, performing arts students are still doing their work. Alex Scully met up with WSU junior Theo Minka, who performed a vocal recital at Bryan Hall last week. Minka's performances included a variety of languages from different musical eras. Let's take a look. Yeah, uh, it started in Italian, um, because musically that's the most fundamental language that the opera started is in Italy. Uh, then I sang 
three German songs by Robert Schumann, a romantic composer. Uh, then I sang in French songs by Renaldo On, who is considered a classical composer even though he's actually a 20th century composer. And then I, um, some American songs, English songs by Ernest Charles, who's a very well-known um, song composer. And then I ended with two Ukrainian pieces, which was with the flute player. Um, I'm Ukrainian and those pieces are very dear to my heart and that's why I had a costume change as well. Yeah, and so, so for, for the recital, it's part of the degree, or for the music performance degree, and so we have to sing in, in, in foreign languages and make sure that we cover all periods. So we covered Baroque, Classical, Romantic, and 20th century. Dr. Julie Wyack, one of Theo's music teachers, had great things to say about his work ethic as a singer. And I'm very pleased with where he's at, but he's always wanting uh, to be better, and that's wonderful. And his goal is to be a professional singer. Reporting from Pullman, Washington, I'm Alex Gilly. It was a special treat to see WCU alumna Jamie Sire re returning to Pullman for the first time since 2002. The former ESPN anchor spoke to the Cable A production team and also spoke in her own panel last Friday about her experiences as a journalist. The Edward R. Murrow College of Communication brings in high achieving al alumni to highlight how far students can go with its support. Cyrus says her goal is to inspire young female journalists to join WSU in hopes they can learn from her success as well as her mistakes. As we told you earlier this week, Spokane is a Northwest hopeful for the location of the second Amazon headquarters, but the Spokane Tribe of Indians also put in a bid. The tribe suggested the headquarters be placed on 300 acres it owns on the West Plains. It would be adjacent to the tribe's $40 million casino project. The Transportation Security Administration or TSA at the Spokane International Airport now requires travelers to remove more electronics than just computers. Anything bigger than a cell phone needs to be removed from their carry-on bags. Both electronics and liquids must be placed in their own bin. The new procedure has been implemented to combat evolving terrorism. It gives TSA officers a clear view of items in a bag using the x-ray screen. After the break, President Donald Trump takes initiative in, reduce, in reducing opioid use and find out how the people of Catalonia are continuing to fight for their independence. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Green hat. <coughs> Red hat. <coughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Red shirt. Blue shirt. Yellow shirt. Oops. <laughs> Red pants, green pants, oops. <laughs> Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know, wherever you are.
President Donald Trump has declared opioid abuse a national public health emergency and announced new steps to combat the issue. President Trump's plan is to redirect several government resources and medical services to rural areas without bringing in more money to fight the issue. Deaths from opioids such as prescribed painkillers, heroin, and synthetic drugs are on the rise in the United States. It is time to liberate our communities from the scourge of drug addiction. Never been this way. We can be the generation that ends the opioid epidemic. We can do it. The Trump administration plans to urge Congress into adding more money to the Public Health Emergency Fund during the end of the year budget negotiations. The Public Health Emergency Fund has not been replenished in years and currently has only $57,000. Tampa police released a new video in connection with the serial killer. The video shows a person of interest running away from a location where the, where the first in the sting of murderers took place in the neighborhoods of Seminole Heights. 32-year-old Monica Hoffa's body was found in a vacant lot. I really can't put into words what I, what I felt when I got that phone call. I mean, it was just surreal. Ivy Hoffa Gates and her family are mourning over the fact that their family member seems to have been killed for no reason. Monica is remembered as a sweet and nice girl. Previous victims were shot at bus stops and simply walking down the street. No family deserves to go through what they are feeling. Harvey Weinstein is suing the Weinstein Company to obtain his personal file and employment records. Weinstein says this legal action will lower his economic interest in the company. Weinstein is facing rape and sexual harassment allegations, while the Weinstein Company is facing financial hardship and litigation from more than 40 women who reported Weinstein's actions. Weinstein filed a lawsuit in Delaware, and he requested the Delaware courts to expedite a hearing over his demands. Thousands of never-before-seen classified documents surrounding President Kennedy's assassinations were released yesterday by the National Archives. But President Trump held some additional documents back from the public. A law passed by Congress effective date October 26, 1992, stated that all files must be made public no later than 25 years after the law was passed. The White House said that they were delaying the release of the remaining files and that they will be made available on a rolling basis in the coming weeks. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad will be held responsible for a gas attack on April 4th in Khan Sarika, Syria, that killed 87 people. Bashar al-Assad's forces are re responsible for the nerve gas attacks, and the United States has re reiterated their statement saying that the Syrian president will play no role in the country's future. The crisis in Catalan continues as separatist leader Carlos Puigdemont is losing footing in the battle for independence. Puigdemont nearly halted progress by calling an end to a new election cycle that Catalan needs to be independent. Puigdemont decided to end the election after opposing governments would not guarantee that they wouldn't enforce certain laws and policies. The decision led to a swift and angry response from his allies. I know that I wanted to call for this election if we had certain guarantees that would allow their celebration in period of normality. The Senate vote that would give Madrid full control of Catalonia's finances, police and public media, and curb the powers of the regional parliament for up to six months is scheduled for today. The Kenyan election has proven to be deadly as police violence leaves at least one person dead. A man was shot to death in Kenya as the presidential election is shocking the country. 14 people were treated for wounds suffered from being beaten by police, and four others were treated for gunshot wounds as police and protesters alike were attacked. Kenyan police have yet to answer any phone calls regarding violence and the reasoning behind the use of tear gas and guns. The presidential candidates strongly urge citizens to boycott the election, as this is the country's second election in three months. Thursday, the Navy rescued two Americans and their dogs after five months being lost at sea. Apple and Tasha Fuba, both from Honolulu, said that they left Hawaii for Tahiti this spring, but their boat lost power in a Pacific Ocean storm in May. Since then, they were lost and just hoping to reach land. A Taiwanese fishing boat discovered them 900 miles southeast of Japan, thousands of miles from where they had planned to go. 
Tesla turned uh, the power back on at a children's hospital in Puerto Rico. The new system using solar panels and batteries allows the hospital to generate the energy needed to care for their patients. The facility has 35 permanent residents with chronic conditions and offers services to about 3,000 young patients. The hospital will not need to worry about any electricity bills due to the energy crisis, but may create a financial plan with Tesla later on. The, uh, later on. The Electric Power Authority reported that Puerto Rico's power service is at 25% so far. It was another beautiful day out on the Palouse. Will the weather stick around over the weekend? When we come back, Majestic Storm will have your weekend forecast. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains can cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. For all the papas out there, let's stop what we're doing and take a moment. A moment to be with our kids. They can be loud moments, goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments, kooky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count, because every time dads take a moment to be with their kids, well, it's pretty momentous. So let's all take a moment to make a moment today. Being prepared is a part of who you are, but it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. What to expect when you're expecting? Like you? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom? You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> it's hard to believe that Halloween is next week with this beautiful weather. Majestic, can we expect these temperatures to stick around for the holiday? Well, Austin, I have good news because the sunshine isn't only going to be sticking around throughout the weekend, but also into next week. So it's looking like Halloween is going to be great weather for kids to go out to go trick-or-treating, or if you have any plans, it's going to be great temperatures to go out and do that. But first, let's go take a look at what today looked like here on the Palouse. So other than lots of sunshine, we did reach a high of 59 degrees, just above average, usually sitting at about 54 degrees. So overall, another beautiful fall day here in the Palouse. But tomorrow, even when you wake up, you're go you'll be waking up to a beautiful um, Saturday morning. More sunshine reaching a high of 63, but starting our day at 45. So the temperatures are going to be chilly starting your day. And expect those temperatures to drop down back to 48 degrees. So again, if you have any plans um, this weekend to go out later in the evening, you definitely want to grab a coat because it's going to be chilly. But as we look into our map, we can see that over in Pullman, it wasn't only beautiful just in the Palouse, but all throughout the state pretty much. But as we look over to our friends over on the west side, Seattle had a high of 65 degrees, Olympia 63, and Vancouver 67 degrees, almost 70 degrees, and it's almost November. So that's pretty Pretty cool, but um, over in central Washington, um, Wenatchee hit a high of 60, Yakima 66. So across the board, like I said, beautiful day out on in Washington. Over in, the, um, over in our side of the state, you can see that Spokane and Pullman had very similar temperatures. 58 degrees for Spokane and 59 for Pullman. Now looking at our five-day forecast into the weekend, it is going to be beautiful. And as we start out our week, it's going to be pretty beautiful as well. Halloween is looking great and um, lots of sunshine, just a little bit of cloud coverage for Halloween, but overall great forecast for your upcoming week. That's all the weather I have. Over to you at the desk. Coming up, the World Series is underway. 
we get you up to speed on the Fall Classic. Plus, it's a big weekend for Cougar Athletics. I'll tell you what to watch for. So we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why couldn't the pellet wait? Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a pair of cat dribbling all over it. Where the cows go on vacation? New York. <laughs> It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. According to air 